When you reach the end of the creation process in Substance Designer, most of the times you want to export your work in order to use it in other apps. And by exporting, I don't mean just saving the outputs. I mean leveraging the power of the procedural graph you just built by making some of its parameters editable outside of Substance Designer. This process is called exposing, and in this video I'm going to teach you all there is to know about it. The reason why it's so important is because you don't want to be stuck in Designer. Designer is just a tool in your pipeline and you need to be able to quickly take a material out of it while keeping the ability to interact with it. It sounds a little bit like magic when you put it that way. After all, when you create something in other node-based interfaces like Blender or Unreal, your work usually remains there and can't be taken out to other apps. So how does Substance Designer overcome that? The answer is Substance Archive or SBSAR. You can think of a Substance Archive as a sort of compressed version of your Substance package. Remember the package is this box here where the graphs and everything related to our project live. So when you're done with your material, instead of just exporting the outputs, you can publish it as one single file, one Substance Archive, which will give you the ability to interact with it outside of Designer. But first, you need to decide which parameters you want to interact with. In other words, you need to expose them. So let's do it together. So this is where being methodical and organized in your work really helps, because now I can easily read the structure of my material and spot the pivotal nodes that would be interesting to expose. Let's start with the beginning of the graph. I'm going to assume that this material will be used by other people that don't necessarily know how I built it or maybe don't know about Substance Designer. So it needs to be simple and intuitive, really focusing on the key parameters and not overwhelming the final user with dozens of micro parameters that don't make a big difference. For that reason, I don't think we should expose anything in the weave structure itself. We found a good balance here and I don't want the final user to break anything. What I would like to expose though is the ornament mask that drives the second weave. This is something that has a strong visual impact and it's easy to change. We already have two ornaments coming from our subgraph here. All we need now is a way to toggle them. There is a node dedicated to that. It's the switch node. This node is basically a big button that returns one of two inputs. So it's super simple to use and really the best node when you want to choose between two things. The problem is that, like I said, it only takes two inputs and I would actually like to add one more ornament to the mix. No worries, the switch node has a big brother with more options, the multi-switch. It works the same way, but instead of a single button, you get a slider that lets you cycle through different inputs. And now let's talk about this third option that I wanted to add. I'm not going to add it here, like I'm not going to create another ornament or import another image. Instead, I would like to give that option to the final users so that they can input whatever they want. So what we need here is to open a little window, so to say, that will let them add their own information, even though they won't have access to the graph itself. And the way we do that is by adding an input node. So input grayscale. There we go. This node is empty because it just acts as a vessel for whatever image will be loaded in it. So of course, it doesn't have any specific parameters, but it has some attributes that will help identify it. So let's call it custom ornament here and here. Now here we need to put ourselves in the final user's shoes. Assuming he doesn't know much about how a graph is built, maybe he will try to input a color image or maybe something with gradients that just wouldn't work. And to prevent that, we can give him a little help by filling out the description box. So I will just clarify things here. Say that it acts as a mask, the image needs to be square and black and white. All right, now let's get back to our multi-switch node. Connect it, and we can finally start to expose some parameters. In the case of the multi-switch, the only thing the user needs to have access to is the input selection. How can we expose this? Well, it's very simple. Just click on that little icon here next to the parameter and select Expose as new graph input. It will then open up a window where you can customize the behavior of this new option. We're not going to touch the identifier here, but we should give the label a sensible name like Ornament Type. 
By default, the multi-switch comes with sliders, and I don't know, but I don't find it very convenient to select things. I can change that here where it says Type Editor and go for a nice drop-down menu. What we can now do is give each input a name. So we know that input 1 is our flowers, so let's call it Floral. Then we click on the little plus button here, input 2, Geometrical, and input 3 will be Custom. All right, then click OK. Now you'll notice that our initial slider has disappeared from the multi-switch parameters. Instead, we just have the name highlighted in blue and it looks like we can't interact with it anymore. Don't worry, that's perfectly normal. When you expose a parameter, it gets promoted to the graph level, meaning it now belongs to the graph and not the node. So to access it, all you need to do is double click anywhere in the background and you will find it here in the input parameters. And you see, if I expand it, here are my options. I can always change them afterwards, like give the inputs different names, change the type of editor, it's all up to you. So notice that we have three tabs here, parameters, preview, and presets. We'll go over the presets later, but the preview tab is important because it shows you how things will look to the final user. You can think of it as the front end of your material. So this, for example, is how our multi-switch will appear. We have this nice drop-down menu and we can test it, making sure everything works properly. All right. What is nice about this preview state is that it doesn't affect your graph. You can always revert back to the default settings and as soon as you leave the tab, you go back to your normal editing. All right, before we move on to the other parameters, I would like to quickly show you how it looks in another app, such as Substance Stager. I will explain how to send a material there in the next video, but for now, let me just show you how it looks. Here, I'm just using another cloth mesh to display our fabric. And you see that in the Material tab, we have Substance, and our Ornate fabric is here. We can change its resolution. And below that, we have our exposed parameters. So we can change the ornament just as expected and switch to custom. Then we can use that little window that we opened by adding an input. And you see that I can now load any image. For example, let me grab this one. And there we go, everything works. That's perfect. I can switch back to floral, geometrical. Awesome. Now there's one thing that bothers me. It's the fact that the custom input slot is displayed even when we are using the default ornaments. Ideally, I would like it to appear only when the user selects custom in the drop-down menu. But let's get back to our graph to fix this. What we're going to do is we're going to select our custom input here. And you see that towards the bottom, we have this condition tab with a visible if field. What this does is that it lets us write a logical expression. See. The input will be visible if the condition is verified. In other words, we can give designer an instruction that would go something like, show this only if this is true. We have to write it following certain conventions that you can find in this page of the documentation that I'm linking here. So this is how you should write it. So visible if, if the input, so here it's the identifier, equals three. Okay, now let's check if it works. And yep, the custom input only appears when we choose custom in the list. Perfect. So in this video, we learned how to expose a parameter and we even went further than that by creating a custom input that will allow the future users to load their own masks. In the next video, we will continue this work by exposing parameters that can be a little bit more tricky, like the color, and we will try to find a way to control both the trim and the gemstones with just one button. I see you in a bit.